The Mishnah in Tractate Sukkah covers the basic laws of the holiday of Sukkahs. It has a chapter on how to build a proper Sukkah, one about a kosher lulav and esrog, and another on the hakafas made during religious services. The fourth chapter is a narrative about the holiday celebrations. It was customary to hold a Simchas Beit Hashov Eva at the Holy Temple when it stood. The term can be loosely translated as water drawing celebration. Sukkot is the holiday on which the world is judged for rain. Because of this, water was drawn from a stream in Jerusalem, brought to the temple, and poured on the base of the altar, all with great ceremony. The chapter begins by praising these festivities by saying, anybody who has never seen the rejoicing at the place of water drawing has never really seen rejoicing in all of his days. Large golden menorahs with bowls filled with pitchers of oil were lit. The lights could be seen all over Jerusalem. The pious and leaders of the community would dance holding torches in their hand. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel would juggle eight flaming batons. The Levim, who provided music for temple observances, would play their instruments during these festivities and were joined by many volunteers. Two priests would stand at the top of the staircase between the two sections of the temple. At daybreak, they would descend, sounding trumpets in honor of the water libation. They would continue to the eastern gate, and when they arrived, they would turn their faces to the west and declare, Our fathers that were in this place had their backs to the sanctuary of Hashem their faces to the east, and would prostrate themselves to the sun. As for us, our eyes are to God. The declaration is based on a condemnation by the prophet Ezekiel when God shows him a vision of the base Hamikdash. He sees at the entrance between the courtyard and the altar about 25 men with their backs to the inner sanctuary and their faces to the east, prostrating themselves to the morning sun. The back, especially the back of the neck, is a biblical idiom for refusal and obstinacy. The eye is a biblical idiom for attention and obedience. The priests officiating at the Simchas Beit Shoeva were saying that their ancestors who lost the temple lost it because they pointedly rejected and violated religious precepts. They themselves are different because they are keeping the Torah with sincerity, joy, and diligence. The biblical revulsion against worship of the planets and constellations seems to be outrooted in outrageous fetishes involving them as well as grotesque practices connected with their glorification especially by the generation before the flood to accentuate the position of the sun on the shortest day of the year huge monuments such as stonehenge with 25-ton cut stones were built. Another technique was to cut a long path to a small room in a mountain. They held large festivals where thousands of pigs were slaughtered as sacrifices. Alternative archaeologists point out that the great pyramids in Egypt mimic the position of the stars in Orion's belt. Likewise, they claim that the location of many Mayan cities was chosen to mimic the placement of the stars in the constellations. 
the Aztecs continued an ancient custom of required monthly human sacrifices to their sun god, with optional additions being in the thousands. The practice was stopped by the Spanish in the 16th century. Recently, several scientists had their bodies cremated after death, with some of the ashes to be brought to the distant planet Pluto. How far the nation of Israel went with this mania is a matter of conjecture. This, the prophet Jeremiah rebukes the nation for incense, wine, and grain offerings to the Queen of Heaven, mentioning that their intention was to anger Hashem. The Mitsudis David and the Mitsudis Zion render the Queen of Heaven as the sun. However, Rashi says it was a large star. The idea of bowing to the sun, though, is mostly an expression of being engrossed in the vanities of the day. The prophets do rebuke Israel for financial corruption, bloodshed, and adultery. While it's clear that things like this did happen, the Jews were not nearly as steeped in it as the swashbuckling swordsmen of days of yore. The main objection voiced by the prophets is that Israel has rejected Hashem and his Torah. It can be difficult to deal with a Jewish sports junkie or workaholic. Likewise, it can be painful to sit in a Jewish home which has no mezuzah, no Jewish books, and no Jewish symbols whatsoever, but does have bacon, banal novels, and licentiousness. To blame the great Jewish suffering through the ages on this seems to be excessive. In any case, the Mishnah says that we are not like this. Our minds and hearts are attached to the sacred books, and our greatest joy is the celebrations in our synagogues on the Jewish holidays. Thank you.